So, how to do one of these 2.5D rigs in Modo? Um, first of all, I'll just look at one of the underlying principles of it, which is that it all relies on image sequences. So, if you, as you can see here, I've got myself a little uh, image plane here, and I've, got, I've applied an image texture, which is an image sequence. And when I go through the frames, by um, scrubbing through the timeline, you can see it's really just uh, four drawings, four images that I uh, quickly drew in Photoshop. And when you go to frame zero, you see the first frame of the sequence, which is a zero, and so on and so forth. So this is normally the behavior you would expect from an image sequence. However, if you click on the image sequence, and you go to the image sequence side tab, you see there was actually two, um, there's several fields uh, text fields or numerical input fields I should say and by default Modo will make these the um, right length for the image sequence so in this case we've got an image sequence that goes from 0 to 3 so those are the numbers that Modo fills in but you can actually fill in your own values here so if you for instance fill in 1 and 1 now you force Modo to always show frame 1 so no matter what you do now in the timeline you will always see frame 1 and the next thing to know is that you can actually drag these into the schematic view. So now what you can do is, and you can probably see where this is going, you type in, say for instance, 2, and you'll get a 2 here. Type in 3, and you get 3 here. So you essentially can control image sequences in the schematic view. So anything you can do in the schematic can be used to control an image sequence. So let's look at uh, the next thing here to do. So what I did here is I just dragged the, this Rhino model from the um, standard library into to the scene and I just made a camera turnaround. In this case it's a 64 point turnaround just uh, the camera rotates around the rhino in the linear way like so and then what I do is I drag this image sequence once I've, this is rendered out into a scene and I apply it to a uh, let me just quickly switch this off I apply it to this plane, just a simple plane and the plane is uh, as you can see, it's made so that it um, faces the, the camera. Essentially, it's a directional constraint. That's the word I was looking for there. <laughs> um, so it's directionally constrained to this um, camera. And on top of that, again, I've just applied this Rhino as an image sequence to this plane. And just like before, I dragged in the first last frame of the sequence and I essentially control it with the angle of this plane. So the plane itself, obviously its angle is now controlled uh, through the constraint. But you can read out the world rotation through this matrix to Euler. You can just read out the Y value of the rotation here of this plane at any given point. And then really you just have to do a bit of a, a mathematical jiggery pokery to get the right values until you get the, the numbers that correspond with the image sequence. Now I'm not going to go through the whole process of explaining how I got to all these because this is actually a, a very crude approximation. It's not very, not completely correct. Um, you probably have to spend uh, quite a bit of time to figuring out how to do this. This is really just to explain the principle. But as you can see as I move around now, it simply goes through the image sequence and always picks the right frame um, that corresponds with the particular camera angle that we're looking at here. And of course, if I now switch on the stencil, you can see they've got like a sort of two and a half D uh, model going on here. So there you have it. A two and a half D rig and modo.